Rice is life for about 3 billion people in the world today. And with the world's population growing every day, improved fertilizer management is now more critical than ever in order to achieve the necessary increases in rice quality and yields. That's what the use of 4R Nutrient Stewardship can do because it helps growers apply the right fertilizer source at the right rate, at the right time, and in the right place. The combination of these factors is site-specific, of course, but the scientific principles are universal. You can learn the basics for all crops in the IPNI video, The Right Way to Grow. Now let's look at the right way to grow rice, starting with the right source. Choosing the right fertilizer source for any crop requires an understanding of soil and environmental conditions. In rice, this means recognizing how nutrients will behave under flooded anaerobic conditions. For example, sulfur needs to be oxidized into the sulfate form to become plant available. Now this reaction can't happen in a flooded field. So to meet the sulfur needs of rice, we need to select a sulfate containing fertilizer source like ammonium sulfate. The nitrate form of nitrogen should also be avoided in flooded fields to minimize denitrification and leaching losses. Better nitrogen choices for rice include the ammonium forming sources like aqua ammonia, which is typically used in water seeded systems, or urea, a commonly used source in direct seeded and transplanted rice. In the direct seeded delayed flood rice cultural system, which is common to the southern United States, most of the nitrogen is applied in the form of urea. Urea is surface applied immediately prior to permanent flood establishment. If the permanent flood is established within a few days after application, volatilization losses can be kept to a minimum. However, if the urea stays on the soil surface for more than five to seven days, volatilization losses can be substantial. Enhanced efficiency fertilizer products such as NBPT and slow release nitrogen sources can be effective at minimizing ammonia volatilization losses and thus an effective part of the 4R nutrient stewardship program. The right fertilizer sources for rice will provide complete and balanced plant nutrition, will consider the cropping system, and will minimize environmental losses. In the past, farmers and policymakers considered rate the single most important factor in fertilizer management. We now know, however, that proper nutrient stewardship requires a combination of four factors. The right rate actually depends on its relationship with source, timing, and placement. Keep this in mind as you consider the right rate for rice. Nutrient requirements for rice, particularly nitrogen, are dependent on hybrid or variety. Yield potential, growth duration, susceptibility to lodging, whether the rice is grown as first crop or ratoon, all of these factors will affect the nutrient requirement. Most recommendation systems in both the developed and developing world will consider hybrid or variety as well as soil type, previous crop, and straw management when determining the nutrient requirement for rice. Now some of this requirement will be met from the soil, the rest we need to add using fertilizer. In the United States and other developed rice producing nations, soil testing is the predominant method used to estimate soil nutrient supply. However, throughout much of Asia where 90% of the world's rice is grown, soil testing is not available. In these regions, we have science-based decision support tools like Nutrient Manager or the Nutrient Expert software that can help growers in choosing the right fertilizer rate for their fields. In-season diagnostic tools like the leaf color chart, optical sensors, and tissue testing can also aid in determining the right rate for top dress and foliar nutrient applications. To produce acceptable grain yields with good milling quality, most rice varieties grown in the U.S. require somewhere between 120 to 180 pounds of nitrogen per acre. In fact, some states also recommend that an additional 30 to 60 pounds of nitrogen be applied if that rice is grown on clay soils as compared to silt loam soils. Where the right rate falls within this range really depends on many site-specific factors, including what the grower does with the other four R's, including right source, time, and place. For rice, the right fertilizer rate will be one that takes into account hybrid or variety, the soil and cropping system, potential loss mechanisms, and then matches nutrient supply with crop requirement. What to apply, how much to apply, when to apply. 
just like choosing the right source and rate. Determining the right time for nutrient applications depends on many site-specific factors. The key is to ensure that the nutrients will be available when the plant needs them. The right timing choice for rice depends on production system. Whether the rice is water seeded, drill seeded, or transplanted, early season nitrogen is critical for tiller development and really sets the stage for the remainder of the growing season. It's not advisable, however, to apply all of the nitrogen early in the season because of the risk of losing the flood, which increases the potential for nutrient losses. So most recommendation systems around the world suggest applying nitrogen in multiple applications throughout the growing season. A typical nitrogen application strategy for rice will include a basal or pre-flood application, followed by one or more mid-season applications, usually occurring prior to panicle differentiation. This strategy ensures that nitrogen is in the field at the time when crop demand is greatest. The right time for fertilization may not always result in the highest nutrient use efficiency, but it's important to understand that NUE is only one of many performance indicators for the 4R Nutrient Stewardship Program, and this should be considered within the context of the whole farm cropping system. For example, early season nitrogen applications onto muddy soil or into the water are relatively inefficient. However, wet weather patterns and the water seeded rice cultural system dictates this application be made. When this is the case, only a small portion of the nitrogen should be applied to the muddy soil or into the water. Then, this application can be followed with multiple applications after the rice plant has established enough root system to actively compete with the loss mechanisms of volatilization and denitrification. Applying fertilizers at the right time lowers the risk of production loss by ensuring that nutrients are in the field when the plant needs them most. The right time also lowers environmental risk by keeping excess nutrients out of the field when the crop doesn't need them. Finally, to complete the 4R puzzle, the right place. Applying nutrients where they need to be, in proximity to the plant and spatially within the field, to ensure their most effective and efficient use by the plants. In some situations, the right place for fertilizer, especially immobile nutrients like phosphorus, is banded near the plant to increase uptake efficiency. This practice is especially effective in soils with low pH, where some of the applied phosphorus will be tied up with iron or aluminum. Now in rice production, banding phosphorus is not as big of an issue because once we flood the field, the soil pH moves toward neutral, which increases the availability of soil phosphorus. It's important to remember, however, that even though we may not have observed any phosphorus deficiencies in the rice crop, once we drain the field, the soil pH will move back to its original level and we may have phosphorus deficiencies in subsequent crops. The right place to fertilize also refers to the nutrient distribution across the field. Not all portions of the field have the same nutrient supplying power. Some parts of the field may have a higher nutrient supplying power while others are a little bit lower. If we apply only one rate of fertilizer across the whole field, some portions of the field may actually be over fertilized while other parts of the field will be under fertilized. What some farmers are doing to alleviate this is using variable rate fertilizer applications based on either grid sampling or historical yield maps. The right place for fertilizer in rice depends on soil characteristics, nutrient behavior in soils, potential loss mechanisms, and spatial variability. For our nutrient stewardship provides the framework needed to increase productivity and profitability of rice production in both the highly intensive agricultural systems of the developed world and the small holder systems in developing nations. It is this increase in productivity aligning with the environmental and social goals of sustainable agricultural systems that will be critical to help feed the growing population and ultimately provide global food security.